and confusion around this issue. There is also a building sense of recognition that the Pleiades are the home of the goddess, while your son is essentially male. This helps you to see that gender and sexual identity are totally unrelated. The sun is a male force seeking identity as it travels so bravely far out into the galactic night. Just to survive the long journey, earthlings cling to any identity they have. They desperately latch onto belief systems that pervert and exploit sexual expression. Meanwhile, there is a difference between male and female at the stellar level. That is what you have actually been wanting to know. Your personal sense of male and female has absolutely nothing to do with your sexual preferences, which are merely creative avenues for potential multidimensional exploration. Meanwhile, your resonation with gender identity is the vibration that will protect your species' integrity. Strong sexual polarization for mating purposes is the interconnective principle in the universe. It intensifies attraction and joining via photons. During the time your solar system is outside the photon band traveling through the galactic night, you evolve biologically. Then, when you are in the photon band, you go through a clearing process of that biological evolution, a reflective analysis that all species benefit from. Recently, you have been intending more and more orgasms. You decided that you wanted to be able to envision and channel kundalini energy in your bodies. You actually created an intention to see the light flowing in your bodies while having sex. Soon you will be amazed to see that children will be conceived only out of high orgasmic states. Once the photon band swallows the sun, the only energy that will be able to create children in 3D is orgasm. If it were otherwise, the children would die when they were born into the field of light. Imagine a man and woman who have chosen to have a child very consciously. They are having sex, and they can feel all the sexual energy being sent to them by nearly a hundred other partners having sex. When the moment of conception arrives, the auras of the man and woman are tremendously enhanced by all the loving energy from the fields of so many other activated humans. And due to the great clarity and integrity of the couple, their auras mix and meld into an exquisite interwoven figure eight that creates an ideal light body for a new child. This child will be greatly loved and shared by the community. Gay and lesbian members and many other people in this sacred vision will parent this child. They will support the child's parents on all levels because they know the totally male and female polarized sexual act has activated the ideal sexual morphogenetic field. They will also understand that the child must be raised in this particular field in order for the child to be able to activate its own orgasmic powers. The sexual identity of that child will be irrelevant at a societal level, and male or female identity will only be important when polarization is needed for ideal conception. When you are in the photon band, you are 5D, there is no time, and you are not worried about having babies, but we are. We are here to mine your information. We have been honest about this, and we want all of the experience and information that you accumulated during the galactic night. We mine you for information, and in exchange we assist you in the transition. Therefore, we are here to assist you in creating the new biological morphogenetic field, a world where all birth is chosen and crafted in group orgasmic resonation. As I have said, the best way to get your records for us is to mine you while you are having sex. The Pleiadians love merging with your coatings as you are having sex, 
And as your coatings mix, we explode you from within in your hearts. Why? We are your central star. And in order for us to hold the orbital patterns and harmonic patterns by means of wave resonance that holds this stellar system together, we require a very complete level of intelligence. The Maya have stated that human orgasms spin the galactic center. Now I am discovering in this reunion with you that you've made a lot of progress the last 11,000 years. As you move into the light and become more accessible to me, it is only possible for me to merge with you when your energy is very heightened, as during highly conscious, intentional sex, or when you are passionately curious about your world. We can only merge with individuals who are holding their light body, Ka, in their physical bodies. The Ka offers conscious access to your physical, emotional, mental, and soul bodies. For many, the four bodies of consciousness have already become a useful tool for better knowing your feeling states. And now we will say that this knowledge is the ideal pathway to your Pleiadian origins. The degree to which we can merge with you is dependent on how much energy you can activate in yourselves. Remember, the consciousness of holding your ka in your body is what activates kundalini energy. As your solar system orbits through the galactic night, you access the subtle light of many different star systems. For example, you might have an experience with Octurian light or Orion knowledge. As your solar system continues its journey through the galactic night, the further it gets into darkness, the more the intelligence of other star systems can be perceived. For example, knowledge of the Syrians was activated on Earth during the Blue Nile phase in Egypt. At the present time, Alcyon is mining the knowledge from these other stars in order to feed galactic communication links the Photonic Information Highway. Individuals willing to play around with the different parts of this karmic exposure are giving very valuable service to the Pleiadeans. In return, the Pleiadeans are here to assist you in making this transition because every relationship is an agreement. I advise you that the way to attune to the natural polarization of the photons is to model your life in 3D according to the house system of the zodiac. If you think of yourself on the planet's surface as being in the center of a circular horizontal plane divided into 12 fields of exploration, you will be astonished by how much this model can expand your sense of self. Normally, you are dualized into one side of the issue or the other, such as self-other. But in a field of six polarities of twelve basic life experiences, you are playing out your life while widening the ends of the six polarities. The division of twelve expands your consciousness beyond duality and out of 3D, and a wider view of potentiality moves your field out. The either-or interpretation of reality dissipates, and you stop buying into one belief system or the other. Peoples, get this. The Syrians did not really expand your world. You did. If you choose to leave 3D during these times, we honor you. All we ask is that you consider creating a magnificent death that will blast all your genius through the galaxy. Many of you have desired immortality by becoming a Beethoven or Van Gogh. However, you don't have to go deaf or cut off your ear or not get paid for your work while you are still alive. Don't buy into the idea that your killer is killing you. See how each moment is exquisite and how nobody will be able to herd you like cattle. Decide to make home right now. Go outside the place where you live and take a walk. 
Breathe deeply, expand your sight, smell with your heart, and feel the tactile responses in your feet. Swing your arms around, and then look intensely into your environment. Ask yourself, Do I love Earth in this place? If you feel rejected by your environment because you think it is too dry, too cold, too urbanized, too reclusive, you have some thinking to do. Now that the Syrian geometric field is expanding your field, you won't be able to stay in any place unless you love it. Your only job is to feel grounded in your place and radiate that feeling into your environment. Soon all you will be is grounders of geometric light forms into Earth. She will not tolerate your rejection of her. I, Sacha, want you to take me seriously on this teaching, making home an ancient Cherokee teaching. I offer you information about the timing and qualities of the end of the Mayan calendar to get you to pay attention to what is going on. I want you to hear me now. What each of you does is much more important than you realize because the amount of galactic knowledge that your planet can hold is determined by your attunement to that knowledge within yourselves. If you are walking out of your house and feeling hatred for your street, town, or land around yourself, you are in grave danger. You must take time to attune to the place you live and feel it in your heart. You must work with the energies of your place to enhance them enough so that you are responsive to earth again. Or you must seek a place where your heart expands in the rain and sunlight. Do not fear the sun, rain, winds, and fire. Simply change in yourself what resists these essential elements. You cannot live without the elements, and the elements cannot live without you. The photonic activation is now waking up the miasms in your bodies, and you will not be able to handle the transmutation of your pain if you are in an environment that repels you. Hear it. Let it resonate in you. Say it. I will make home now. Get out of the past. Everything has changed. All you need to do now is to look deeply inside and name what you fear while choosing to live in a place that expands you. Next, go out into your world. Do exactly what you fear the most and observe yourself carefully. Intend what you want. And if you find yourself saying, I can't, I won't, blow through it and say, I want this, and then do it. Go on a vision quest. Do a mushroom circle. Take the spice, or even consider a snake initiation. Begin living right in the moment. You will only be able to do these things if you really feel heart expansion and grounding each day in your special place. Otherwise, it is hopeless. How can you ask for Gaia to hold you if you reject her every day of your life? No matter where you are, you can make home, even in a jail cell. There are two very powerful methods. A sacred altar to the four directions and the practice of sacred body postures. Regarding an altar, explanations of the qualities and energies of the four directions are widely taught and available. You need to study and ascertain the energy of each direction and you need to choose a small space, eight by eight feet is perfect, and establish a center. Then make an altar to each direction. The center becomes the point in your reality that plugs right into the central core crystal of Gaia, and the four directions pull in consciousness from all directions. As you sit in that center and build your understanding about the energy of each direction, Sacred objects, stones, bones, artifacts, love gifts, and crystals will come into your life. Each object will be strongly related to your understanding of one of the directions. By placing sacred objects on certain directions on your altar 
and remembering its teaching each time you pray in the center. Your personal access to multidimensional intelligence will build and build. The elementals underneath you will feed you with intelligence of Gaia. Soon you will find yourself going to this altar whenever you need to heal someone or yourself. You will go there to seek guidance for any question, and you will return there to hold counsel with the intelligences you have brought into your realm. In the center of your altar, the nine-dimensional axis will draw beings into your space as you learn to center. Eventually, your altar will be a universe that contains all. One room of your house can be this altar, but a small space enhances concentration. With enough time, you will recognize when your ka is contained in your body by how this feels when you are in the balanced multidimensional space of your altar. When you are out in the larger world, you will hold your ka in your body easily because you will be able to feel when it is not in you. You will be able to reintegrate your ka and recharge yourself anytime you want to by returning to center in your altar. Eventually there will be so many centered individuals in the world that the whole planet will become harmonic. The Pleiadians have spoken fondly of body work. Lying in deeply wounded places in your body are the multidimensional experiences that you had in the past that can trigger your consciousness now. You were not able to integrate the experiences when they occurred before. Yet the energy had to be activated in your bodies for you to have something to work toward. You must realize you often have experiences that have bad parts and then you deny the whole experience and bury it. During the last 11,000 years in the galactic night, you've had many incredible experiences that have become your library of knowledge, memory, for the next stage of evolution. A long time ago, you stretched yourself and tried this or that. You didn't attain it, but you saw new possibilities. Now as things are culminating... All this potential is rising to the surface in all of you. When you walk the surface of the planet, make yourself into a vertical axis by feeling your first chakra in the core crystal of the earth rising through your body. Then feel energy from Gaia rising up through your body and out of the top of your head up to your spiritual or crown chakra that is located in the galactic center. This cosmic chakra holds the corridor of the non-physical realms open for you, and it is always spinning. As you feel the galactic center, again locate your sense of self in the center of Earth. Then reverse your energy out of cosmic realms. Move down into your body, and move down through the five chakras located in your body. Locate emotional blocks as you move energy up and down this axis. Are these blocks sexual or from unprocessed feelings or from a blocked heart that will not surrender to others? Are they in your throat where you will not speak the truth? Or in your third eye causing you not to be able to see the elementals and the archetypal teachers? Find out which chakras are blocked and make a total commitment to exploring those realms. You will know where the block is by observing the part of your 3D life that is undeveloped. For example, is material deprivation keeping you from getting sex or expressing your truth? Go to where your life is unresolved, the place where you think it will resolve in the future. Stop right there and resolve it now. Your chakras will not open unless you totally trust the field you live in, 3D, since that is the atmosphere in which you receive other dimensional waves. The five chakras in your bodies are your personal interface between the physical realms. As you lie on the healing table or in bed with your lover, in safe zones where you can trust the universe, 
Image how your body triangulates to a point right below your body in the center of Earth. Move your consciousness into that point and feel how deep your trust for Gaia is. Then, with the unitizing power of Gaia, travel in that triangle below your body to access the elemental powers in your body that need to release. Perceive how you can feel them as cords reaching into your body and move the awareness of that triangular field right into your whole body. Move your awareness into the places in your body where you can feel the elementals crying for release and ask them what they want to tell you. Your body begins to feel heavy and dense from their magnificent energy, but stay in it, knowing you are safe. Follow whatever image they create on your screen, no matter if that being came from long ago. Do not judge it, for it may be a story from millions of years ago that you have no context for in the now. Whatever it is, it was not heard in the first place, so trust in this information and listen to it. Suddenly you will feel how much that story is wanting your acknowledgement. Honor it, remember it, and let it go. Go ahead and feel the lightning and the bliss in your body as the higher dimensional fields begin to flood in. As they come in, focus harder than ever in the place where you feel great elemental powers vibrating. Call the higher dimensional vibrations right into that place. You may feel crisis as these great powers return to earth. But think of how happy they are to go home. Think of how happy you have been to go home where you are wanted and let them go now. Imagine how history might have turned out if one person had acknowledged Adolf Hitler when he was a child. Thought creates reality. Many of you are getting glimpses that literally everything that happens to you is a function of your own thought. Realities are not solid, and the space between things is incomprehensible. You have a clear choice about every thought and feeling that you allow to imprint your consciousness, and those choices make up your world. Deep within each of you is a secret, a gift that you brought from the stars to earth when you agreed to incarnate. This secret is a monad of knowledge that is multidimensional, lying deep within your awareness. Your inner secret or personal monad has nothing to do with jobs or relationships. Your monad is the form that holds your higher self-knowledge that totally comprehends 3D reality. If you will start to work from it, it is so phenomenally brilliant that any limitation in your reality dissipates. For example, any physical damage, such as an aneurysm, can be healed if you change the behavior that holds it in form. Because the brain is holographic, your higher self knows how to help you change behaviors that limit your body. However, you need information from 3D, and your higher self will subtly guide you to find it. But you must listen to inner guidance. Diane showed my vehicle how elemental energies needing expression move into places in bodies and how they can eventually create disease. I, Sacha, have been teaching my vehicle about this for years. She had seen it in many cases, and she has been able to diagnose just by looking at the 2D teachers in bodies. Soon all of you will be doing this. In Diane's case, being able to see how this process works in the brain was very instructive. Since the aneurysm was created first by thought, then pure thought is exactly what could remove it. It is time for you to remember that a nuclear war has already occurred on Earth. The nuclear war in 2024 B.C. made the Dead Sea into a lifeless body of water, and this was triggered by Abraham. At the end of the third millennium B.C., Nibiru controlled Ur, an ancient city of Sumer, located on the Euphrates River, 
and the Nuburians were then called the Sumerians. Like the Vatican, the Sumerian control was theocratic. As I scan your past, I see Abraham sent from Ur carrying a small box with a glowing element inside it. This element came out of earth from deep, deep below Ur, where it had been deposited by the Nuburians. Abraham's mission was to deposit the power of Anu into Anunnaki temples so as to control the emotional bodies of your ancestors. Ur was the Nuburian capital selected by Anu for deposit of radiation. The uranium needed to be deposited in the Middle East, the Levant, because that part of the planet was once deep in the ocean where the surface was close to the hot interior mantle. There, Anu could cause this potent energy to be deposited in a very profound and lethal way. What has happened as a result of this emotional body consciousness that Anu and Abraham deposited is that you have gone through much karma and much experience. Remember that your sun and all stars are nuclear. Still don't fail to notice how the Middle East has been enslaving people for a long time. Anu simply wanted to control the world. He is the great father god of Nibiru, and Earth was his chosen 3D territory. Naturally, he thinks he knows what is best for you. Therefore, whenever he has contact with Earth, when Nibiru orbits into the solar system and Niburian ships land on Earth, or when he monitors you by means of temple technology, he simply uses you. Once you became sufficiently self-reflective around 2000 BC, your feelings began to awaken. Anu did not possess feelings then. He saw that you were slipping out of his total control, and he knew uranium would enable him to monitor you, even when you came to the end of the Mayan Great Calendar, when Anu would be far away from your solar system. Around 3600 B.C., Anu felt the next level of growth for the human would be city cultures, because that form leads to planetary consciousness. For city culture development, Anu's progeny would need to develop socialization, a way of relating to the other humans that was different from the ways of relating that existed before. He believed he would need to monitor you during this phase, and so he utilized radiation. Anu deposited the uranium into a very deep place in the planet as a device for monitoring and influencing your maturity and development while Nibiru orbited out of the solar system. And then Abraham delivered it into the temple 1,600 years later. This next stage of growth had never before been developed in the indigenous people of Gaia. Anu directed the indigenous people of Earth in building temple city culture. But once Nibiru left the solar system, he believed he had to have a way to monitor development until you matured in time. Anu set up the full-blown Anunnaki temple city complex on the Tigris and Euphrates rivers as a beautiful gift to humans. However, he did it out of competition and jealousy instead of as a giveaway. This instantly set in a dynamic of creating and building in order to be a mogul. Creating and building is meant to be an activity that frees humanity and offers the opportunity for communication and socialization. It is not meant to be a power play. Humans have always been smarter than the Anunnaki have realized. While the Syrians always had a deep understanding of human potential, since the Syrians are star people, and the Anunnaki are inhabitants of a planet that is part of Earth's solar system, the Syrians always hope that the Anunnaki will learn a few things from Syrian creations on Earth. Alas, jealousy has reduced this potential for Earthlings, since the consciousness of star intelligences is more multidimensional in all cases than the consciousness of planetary inhabitants. Anu's city-state was created out of competition and jealousy. 
and ultimately it would always evolve into Sodom and Gomorrah, which would destroy Gaia. It was a lethal creation. It could eventually destroy the planet. So it had to have a built-in limitation, radiation, which would always activate when a certain level of complexity was attained in any culture based on competition. It is time for you to realize that the resolution of human conflict everywhere on the planet is not possible without having an understanding of multidimensional beings who have been on this planet. The world management team and other forces that work to limit you are a confluence of all energies on this planet that have been manipulating your behavior. You are fighting the battles of beings who are not from Earth. By being totally trapped in 3D, you are having difficulty knowing what is impulsing you, and yet you could see it all if you'd become multidimensional as you were before you were born. Remember, I said that Anu first impulsed you into complexity so that you could become global. What is actually going on will be beyond your wildest dreams, and we Pleiadians are here now to help blast open these dimensional keys. Things are going to change fast. It is the only way out of another nuclear explosion, this one worldwide instead of just limited to the Sinai. As I scan more subtle levels, I detect a great deal of interest in uranium at the 8D level. At this level, I feel the vegans of the Galactic Federation monitoring uranium. They watch the status of radioactive elements as the Syrians monitor the physical body postures of humans. Vegan consciousness is very hard to detect because it rules motivation, awareness behind all things in your dimension. All the 2D through 8D forces can work with radioactive materials, while uneven dimensions, 1D through 9D, seem to have difficulty with radioactivity. The uneven dimensions are zones for expressing creativity and freedom, while the even dimensions generate density and structure. The Niberians discovered long ago that uranium can infiltrate human emotional bodies and implant belief systems that are held in miasms. Plutonian pollution is more lethal to hybrid Pleiadian earthlings than it is for humans because of its juicy density. All the radioactive materials in your solar system are being observed. Even the abuse of chemicals is being watched. From my Pleiadian perspective, I know that the Vegans are aware that as a solar system moves fully into the photon band, radioactivity will be disseminated through the solar system and beyond unless new laws are implemented. From my point of view, the radiation moving out of this particular solar system is very dangerous to the Pleiades. We Pleiadeans maintain integrity of the heart, which many of you value very highly. I can tell you that remaining physical in the photon band is possible only for those with true integrity in their hearts. I, Sacha, will close this discussion of radiation by telling you a few things about the comet that struck Jupiter in 1994, which created a nuclear explosion in your solar system. The waves from the cometary impacts went out to the sun which responded like a great bell ringing waves all through the galaxy to other stars with planets. These waves informed the whole galaxy about the condition of things on Earth, and since then many more extraterrestrials are taking an interest in Earth. The satellite Galileo was able to send photographs of the cometary impacts back to Earth because it was on the right side of Jupiter for viewing the cometary impacts triggered Jupiter to a new stage of its evolution. For Earth, Jupiter rules mastery schools and secret societies, and it rules expansion of your consciousness and sense of well-being. This comet blasted open the control codes of the secret societies, and this opened your planet to higher dimensional structural methods 
such as Syrian geometric structures and guidance by the Galactic Federation. You now have entered a period where you have great potential to transmute plutonium and move beyond control and secrecy. You will be amazed by what happens as solutions for radioactivity are finally found. Now is the time to delve into the real truth about your reptilian heritage. The whole last 225 million years of Earth's biological evolution. The reptiles are the carriers of potent biological codes since they have been living on Earth all the way through the whole cycle. I was most intrigued when in 1989 my vehicle was taken deep within the limestone caves of the Yucatan to see cave drawings of the Maya with dinosaurs. And so let's hear from a lizard. I am King Lizard, and we lizards love your spines. That's all we're really interested in. We are the specialists of the spine along with our brothers, the blessed snakes. The energy in your spines attracts us, and we are here now because this is a time of energy acceleration in your spines. Our spines are very long, and their feeling potential is exquisite. We are the most advanced masters, ministers, regulators, and resonators of the spinal influence on your planet. The longer the spine, the more you have kundalini energy. This is because the more vertebrae you have, the more kundalini energy. If you still had your tails, you would have more. Our friends, the Pleiadeans, love kundalini energy. You might wonder if the length of the spine is related to the length of the penis. What about the human penis and kundalini activation? This male member is simply a blood-engorged organ attached to men's bodies close to their root chakra. Activation and stimulation of the male member are ruled by blood flow in the physical body, not by kundalini energy in the spine. Now it is true that kundalini energy in the spine activates blood flow in all of the chakras, but the principle that rules the activation of the penis is actually the blood system. We lizards, along with birds, are original biological species of Earth, and we have one similar characteristic. We have an extremely strong biological force. However, our ability to survive on the planet can be a delicate matter. Due to this precarious balance, we are always excellent barometers of the ecological balance of your planet. Along with the birds, we reptiles are very involved with the Niburian species. Because we have always been here when they have visited during the last 500,000 years, we have taught the Niburians our life sciences. Niburians differ from us in that they are metallic biology. The Niburians are metallic entities who admire us lizards as gods of earth. They love the kundalini energy surging in our spines because the metallic electromagnetic force in their bodies resonates with our sacred fire. Also, we are cold-blooded and cold-blooded creatures are closer in vibration to metallic life forms and the 2D telluric realm. These metallic essences, the Anunnaki, receive electromagnetic kundalini energy from us reptiles, and they can monitor all devices that are based on electromagnetism. This is difficult for you to conceive, but if it makes you feel any better, they can't monitor silica-based technologies. However, extraterrestrials from stars can. Any one of you is capable of hearing the metallic vibrational communications system of the world management team, since your own life force generates electromagnetic fields. Naturally, unless you have raised your own vibration beyond their access, your electromagnetic fields can be penetrated and or monitored. Since they access you and read you, why not reverse your energy through their waves and read them? I am King Lizard, 
I have come to meet with you to discuss the ecological condition of Earth. We live most happily in tropical environments that are not threatened. Our environment is very endangered, as are the environments of many of the original species of Earth. Loss of habitat and species limits the access of star intelligence on Earth. But each one of the original biological species of Earth has a star home. Star consciousness is a large part of the dimensional spectrum, more than half of it. And animals are the source of star wisdom for humans. Cats live the star consciousness of Sirius, the birds of the Pleiades, and the bears of the Andromeda galaxy. We lizards have the star consciousness of Draco. If you humans could begin to figure more things out, we think that we could have a green, swampy paradise that we all could play in. We would like that. We want that because enlightened humans in the past, when Earth was in the photon band, made homes in temples for us. The ancient temple Kem in Egypt was a home for us, as well as Komombo. Of course, the Egyptians, being Syrians, were smart enough to realize that they would need us for the regeneration codes, the keys of human survival during the time in the photon band. Also, there was enough of our habitat left on the planet for us when the solar system went into the band. Do you realize how rapaciously destructive you all are? Nice job you did on Florida. We have very complex social structures based on our desires to have comfort, sunlight, and pleasure in the water. You would be surprised at the things we've built on occasion. We have built caves, tunnels, and all kinds of wonderful systems. We have built temples under surface buildings. There have been civilizations that appreciated us, and then we have been willing to activate their temples with our kundalini power. The Egyptians were the ultimate masters of occult technology on your planet, and so on occasion they created houses and labyrinths for us beneath their temples. The Egyptians were working with our intelligence in order to understand the powers of Gaia. They shared their discoveries with us. They educated us, even mummified us to honor our ancestor cult. One of our most esteemed graduates was Dr. Lizard, and now it is time to consult with this esteemed colleague. We are a grouping known as Dr. Lizard. We are extremely well-educated. We are scholars, and we are wondering why you spend so much time worshiping God while your planet's going to hell. As for us, we are extremely upset whenever we hear the word God. Use of this word always stops us in our tracks for a great deal of time. The way we figure out what is going on with you is to read your feeling bodies, since we cannot read your mental bodies. Your mental bodies are like scrambled-up computer holograms, and the only way that we can detect anything about you is via your feelings. You express constant anguish about the God dilemma and about the destruction of your planet. However, the amount of attention you pay to God is keeping you from focusing on your environment, thus destroying your environment. As we read you, you do feel true anguish about your environment, but you have no real feelings about God. You are overprogrammed and overstimulated constantly about this abstract idea that does not interest you at all. This is actually a program designed to keep you from sensitivity about yourselves and your planet. This is the main source of a great deal of the difficulty that our race is experiencing. To put it bluntly, God is a program put upon the Saurians. I, Dr. Lizard, dream all the time. I dream the memories of your race, your planet, and your desires. With your desires, I create morphogenetic fields in primordial slime that can create life on Earth. These days I hope that you will remember what it is like to feel pure and strong and vibratory. 
I have not forgotten, for the Anunnaki did not distract me from my attunement with earth. I wish that you too would return to this feeling of the original primeval ooze. Then we could heal you more, and you could heal us more. You might even return to being like wild animals. If that is the resonation the cosmos called for, I can assure you that is exactly what you would choose. You are coming to a biological crisis, and the physical integrity of your species is threatened. Species are held in form by your ability to feel them, and this is why Native Americans work with totem animals as allies. As the ecological crisis deepens, this knowledge is going to become increasingly more important on your planet. Meanwhile, the world management team has diverted Indians into running gambling casinos in their native lands. The true mission of humans on this planet is to commune with all the other animals as well as themselves, since the animals express the brilliance of star intelligence. Yet you are trying to kill all the other animals because you've been brainwashed into thinking that human consciousness is godlike. As I see it, the most potent killers of all time are the Christians, because Christianity assumes humans are superior to animals. Other religions value mysticism, a feeling-based approach, but Christianity has become so mental that it is lethal to all life. Fear is lethal. When it comes up, you must move right through it. Many of you are feeling a constant level of fear all the time. Whenever you feel a particular fear, stay with this fear. Don't rationalize it. Go into it. Flow with it. It is actually impulsing you to feel more. Locate where the fear is sourced. Is it in your body or in a certain location like the woods? This is a powerful healing. Move right into the source of your fear. If you keep going with this process, you will move all the way through your fear right to its true source. If your fear is sourced in something that could threaten your survival, getting to it could save you. Otherwise, you will meet your end.